When a woman smiles, her dress should smile too. My name is Maloa Ivondrufin, President at MOVE. Hi, my name is Maloa Ivondrufin Jabel. I'm a millennial on the move. I'm a fashion designer, stylist, and a journalist, and a writer also. And I also write about women empowerment and motivate women. So why fashion? I find fashion as a way of speaking through myself, as a way of being heard through the society, and as a way of expressing my motives and all that. I also find fashion as a way that I can empower every woman in her life, like a career, how whatever, whatever every woman is going through in life. So born and raised in a family of four, my mom and dad were the most supportive people I remember back then. Cause, and then what motivated me through like I wanted to know more about fashion, my mom was this mother who any second my mom would have an event, she could come in and tell us I'm having such a wedding, I want to pull through, I want to be seen. My mom was this mother who really wanted to be seen, like someone who is there like hey, everyone looking at her like you're the one who dressed the most. But then I remember there's one thing she told me and I live with it up to date. She kept telling me when the inside is as beautiful as the outside, there's more to life. Cause you cannot just dress up and look all nice and like your outside is just as ugly as everything. Is done by none other than Maloa Rufi. <laughs> Growing up, my favorite subjects, according to my favorite subject, which was history and biology, I really wanted to be either a lawyer or a journalist. But then there's one time I sat down and I was like, Dad, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to pursue this career. I'm going to do something creative with the talent I have. I went back to the drawing board, looked at my skills back then. I had very good skills in the art sector. I took art also as my unit. I had very good skills in the art sector. I loved history. History, I loved it most because of my the time when culture, all about culture, it made me love history. I wanted to know which culture does this, which culture uses red, which culture goes purple, which culture goes brown, which culture puts up the pots and all that. It was really fascinating. A life after my teenage years, they are so, let me say it comes like a, like a cycle. They, they are the good size, the bad size where, where you face, but then you have to embrace yourself Put yourself together and get up. Go get whatever you needed to be achieved in this world. Uh, I remember the funny bit of life was my first, my first time I told my dad, Dad, I want to go through my fashion journey. I want to pursue my career. My dad was like, the re first, my dad was like, are you sure you're going to do this? I was like, yeah, dad, I'm going to pull through. What my dad did, he made sure he funded me for my first level. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Getting into school, I only thought about fashion being like a place where you just sketch things and you don't bring them into reality. I was forced to bring whatever I sketched down into reality. And that was the most like, I couldn't. I got my skirt done and the first impression my dad, when I took it home, it, my dad was like, yeah, you can do it, my daughter. I think that motivation really pulled me through. And I was like, if my dad has believed in me, why am I not to believe in myself? I can do this. And that's what keeps me going. As a young millennial, apparent support is very key in that you don't expect anyone to fund your projects, you don't expect anyone to ever motivate you like a mom's motivation and all that. As a parent, I feel like supporting, putting in money, putting in I don't flights, getting visas for the youngsters, it's a plus for everyone who is like pursuing his or her goals. And I thank God for my dad who was able to pull through until like I graduated, I finished my levels and I started my own company. How I got to know my fashion school was through online. I was busy scrolling, scrolling as I looked down through my phone. Then something came up, Mackenzie School of Fashion and Design. I look at what they entail, what they cover and all that. At first I saw art there. I was like lucky. That's lucky. I'm so lucky because this place is 
catering for whatever I'm so passionate about. My first day in school was in a meeting where the teachers were asking, where do you see yourself in the five years to come? Where do you see yourself in the ten years to come? As a first year, you'll be fascinated, I'm telling you, because you'll be like, I'm seeing myself as a big brand in the next five years. I'm seeing myself getting over Louis Vuitton, getting over all the designers and all that. But then after some time, after some period you're in school, you're like, ah, that was a wrong dream at first because I could see myself in the next five years as maybe someone who is outsourcing garments from making her own prints, making the, uh, all that. My brand name is Mauve. Mauve is a color. Mauve is a shade of purple shade and a purple and a pink shade. My dream came about when I was young. I was in school, seated, answering questions. And my voice was never heard in any way. You know that when you struggle raising up your hand, you're not being chosen, raising up your hand again, someone else from the back raising up your hand. And I was like, what will I do for my voice to ever speak and make sense? into the society. So I sat down, having my career journey through fashion, my schooling and all that, I sat down, had to have a brand called Move. My brand Move, we focus majorly on women, women, ab ab women aged 21 to 45 years old. Inspiration about the Move color, my mother, my mother. I remember when I was young, my mother used to issue everyone with a color. Yours would be red, yours would be orange, yours would be blue, green and all that. So mine happened to be purple. Anything my mom used to go buy and come back with it was purple. A potty, a seat, pencil, rubber, hairband, clothes, it, they were all purple. So like I grew up like, having that passion like when I have anything in life, I'm going to do different purple of shades. I got my color inspiration from my mother and of which that same color I picked it because I wanted it to represent femininity, divinity and like confidence. I also chose purple because we as Mauve brand, we happen to manipulate lots of fabrics and purple works a lot with creativity. So I went for purple and Mauve. The very first product I did as Mauve was a product I did like a skirt, just a basic skirt. And I live to remember it because it's still there hanging on my wardrobe. It was a skirt I did, I really wanted to motivate myself. My first time in a sewing machine, my first time learning these basic skills and all that. So that skirt, I, li I still have it on my wardrobe as a souvenir that I use every day and look at it and I'm like, yeah, I can see progress. We can see progress and I endeavor like that. We've made several outfits as Brown Mauve and we are planning to like make more and more and more. What we do, like uh, according to our outfits, what we go through is like minimal of cloth showing, minimal of necklaces, minimal of jewelries, and also like we always try to embrace every woman, whether skinny, short, tall, dark, brown red we always cater for every woman's need and we always our dream and our goal is to make sure satisfaction in every woman's wardrobe let me tell you i had the wrong peers at first because i could tell someone this is what i do everyone could be like oh so you're a tailor oh so you're a tailor so being a little-minded person i could take that one as a very he heavy comment go sit down start crying and all that water but then there's one person who really motivated me my friend sally motivated me and she was like do you see yourself being someone great according to this fashion industry i was like yes you're speaking sense into me so why are you afraid because i remember the worst was when someone was like you cannot be my friend because you're pursuing fashion i was like okay cool this is what is gonna pay me this is what is gonna bring money to my table because fashion is a field or a very competitive industry and to be like it's a rich industry also because many people innovatives come everyone wants to uh, people want sleeves people want trousers and all that have you ever been pronounced as a president, not for a country, but for a company? Have you ever made your biggest achievement and everyone is so proud about you? Let's take a short commercial break. We'll be right back for me to share with you my biggest achievement. Welcome back, Karibu Tena. 
as I was telling you, have you ever been like rewarded for something big you've done? I got rewarded, guess what? Using my women empowerment segment where I write and talk about the women people, how women should embrace their bodies and all that, I got a segment of the women writer on Kenya as a women fashion writer. I also got a slot to like, as a stylist, I got brands coming up. Can you do this for us? And a paying brand, yeah. I got brand, I got backyard, I got insta shoes, sandu leather. I do that as my part of my career also as a stylist. What basically we as fashion designers and as people from the MOVE company do is we, f we outsource ideas where we outsource from either museums, uh, like mine, the MOVE idea comes from Picasso of late, we, we source our ideas from Picasso's artwork. So what basically we do is get the ideas first on paper, get a mood board, get a fabric mood board, visual mind map, all that, get a rough sketch of the idea we want. If it's a skirt, how do you want the skirt? Do we want a an airline skirt do you want a gathered skirt do you do you want a goddess skirt and all that so we get the idea get through we go through a process called pattern drafting we draft the idea depending on the sizes of different clients and all that come to the process of pattern cutting like we cut the fabric using the patterns we've made come to the process of stitching where we have our machine here we, that goes through that makes the garments to the full satisfaction what happens also in the fashion industry, we have things called mannequins that act as a human body. So as we stitch, we fit through them and they have all different sizes. I love to meet you want to know you want to know the celebrity I literally die to meet it's Victoria Beckham reason being Victoria is in my passion is in my field I really love to meet that woman in the sense that she also specializes on making women garments women accessories uh, that really inspire her also As I get through like hanging around my social places, getting to get it, I like hanging around through most inspirational places. One place I really love to recommend in Nairobi is the social house. I've been there. I've been there and I can tell you that place, it's the most nice place as a designer, as anyone who wants to be there. And it's also so refreshing and all that. As a graduate at Mark and Soul School of Fashion and Design, I remember the last project we had to do was make a 10 garment collection inspired by anything in your life that you feel so nice. As an artistic student, I was inspired by Pablo Picasso's artwork, which is still the inspiration behind MOVE. I went through sketch ideas, went overboard, did trousers, did everything. I got through that idea. We presented a capsule of 10 garment collection on the runway. And do you know, guess what? Me, that I never believed in self, everyone was cheering up. My lawyer, you did us proud. My lawyer, you did us proud. And I think that was the breakthrough towards my journey also. Because I now again got like encouragement to believe in myself. Because my dad believed in myself. People have believed in myself. And everyone like is proud of whatever I'm doing. I have five mistakes I've made in the career-wise and in myself. The first mistake was procrastinating my dream, my fashion dream journey. Because people talked, people talked. I was like, I'm going to listen to people. I'm not going to listen to myself. So I think the mistake I did was listening to people instead of focusing on myself. 
the other mistake i'm not gonna mention what i did <laughs> that is so skeptical it's so teary uh, another mistake i also did was the time my dad decided like oh we are gonna take you through some process like you also combine it and i never like wanted to do it the marketing bit of which right now i find it so 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 important in my life and i'm undergoing a course of marketing fashion itself is a high leading creative industry so you cannot tell me like after graduation i'm gonna sit back at my dad's house wait for him to finance my bills wait for my dad to get my bills my hair done my nails done fashion itself is a creative industry finishing having finished school i did my internship of which i finished it uh, I made through, I now decided, let me now start my own company slowly by slowly by slowly. We grew Move, and it's like, Move is a, a year older year. So getting through the fashion industry, it's yes, it's a competitive industry. You have to be so keen to details. You have to be creative and innovative. I fell into that and I was like, I'm going to get this. Let me strike up and go. The biggest lesson I've learned through the fashion journey is like, Anyone can be self-employed and you can be a CEO of your own. Sitting at the house, getting your things done, you're just like email responses, getting down to know the color range, the trends and all that. So the biggest lesson is also like being appreciated as a fashion designer in a world where everyone wants to be an engineer, everyone wants to be a lawyer, journalist and all that. I got appreciated and I really thank God like my idea, people appreciated it. And everyone is now rocking like move, 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 yeah. Our biggest dream as move is to actually make fashion fun fashion functional. Because at times people just do fashion because it's there. I'll throw in a top. But our biggest dream is to make fashion functional. And I also want my, our biggest dream is to get our own retail space because right now we are outsourcing products from different places, Dubai, China and all that. It's to get our own retail place and our own production where we all get our garments done, uh, printing and all that in just one space. Working with a young team, actually it's a plus, let me tell you, because as a young generation team, these are people who like are very creative like they have creative minds so working with them is a plus because i have two interns i'm working with at my move at the move production who like they bring out they're the ones bringing out ideas should we do these presidents should we go about this should we do this are they adding that is working with the teen group it's a plus for me Okay, what I can comment about the fashion Kenyan industry is that we lack a lot of creative minds. What people most do is like they do the basic, they dwell in whatever it is. And as youngsters who are like appraising with the fashion industry, they don't get a seat to be there and also like expand their knowledge and bring out their ideas. So as a Kenyan fashion industry, on a rate to of one to ten, I'll give it a four over ten on an honest opinion as a fashion designer in the industry what i'll definitely put across or maybe change in the fashion industry as a fashion designer is the field where we forget that fabric manipulation is also key in the fashion industry people just tend to just make garments add jewelries add accessories but they forget the most interesting bit about it it's the fabric manipulation so i'd really love to see lots of fashion designers coming up with different fabric manipulations if it's ruching if it's stitching if it's just different methods of fabric manipulation and it will also benefit us as a country so i'll put my work there on instagram of which my instagram handle is maloa rupin